In this video, I will show you how to download and install Android Studio. Now, here we have to go to this link. It is on android.com. So let's click on this link. Now let's click on this download button. So here, of course, we need to accept this license. So we have to scroll down and then at the end we have to check this box then we have to click on this button now we can save this installer on the computer but in my case i have already downloaded it so i will cancel this download and i will use the installer that i have downloaded which is this one so let's run it in this window we have to click next then we have to click next again then here we can accept this location where android studio will be installed then let's click next so let's click install now the installation finished successfully so let's click on next and now if we want to start android studio we can check this box then let's click on finish So in this window it is mentioned that there is no SDK installed so for this reason it is necessary to install an SDK and of course we need to be connected to the internet to allow Android Studio to download the, uh, the SDK. So let's click on next and of course it will be uh, installed at this location. So let's click next. So let's click finish. Now the download of the different required components has been finished successfully so let's click on finish and in this window we can create a new project using this button and here I will just create a simple project that contains an empty activity so I will just select empty activity then next so this application I will call it first application and I will create it using the Java language so I have to select Java not Kotlin also I will accept this default selection it is API 21 and finally let's click on finish so as you can see here Android Studio is now downloading Gradle and Gradle is the building tool of your Android application that's why we cannot see here the project structure because the download of Gradle did not finish yet so we have to wait till the end of the download of Gradle now as we can see the different packages required by Gradle have been downloaded correctly after about 15 minutes and here we can see the project structure so when we created this empty activity in fact two files have been created the first one is the java class called mainactivity.java and the second one is the layout file which is a resource file called activity main.xml so in the java class as we can see we have only this method and this method will be executed when the application starts so the activity in Android is the window on the operating system. It is the user interface on the operating system. So when we start the activity, in fact, onCreate will be executed. And this method will be uh, called. So this method will uh, set the interface that we built using the resource file, which is activity main.xml and it will set this interface into this activity so now if we want to complete and to modify the interface of the activity it is necessary to modify the resource file which is activity main so this is the resource file it is activity main we can we can find it under resource layout and this is it 
So this is the layout file. It is a resource file, as I said, and it is available under layout into the resource folder. So here we can create our interface. So in this designer, we have several areas. This area for the different components that we can put into the interface. This area is for the available components that we have already set and added to the interface and this area for the attributes of the selected component. So if I select this uh, component, the different properties of this component will appear here. For example, I can find the text property which allows me to modify the text. So here, instead of hello world, I can say hello Android. Also here, as we can see, we have two areas for the interface. So we can select this one because this blueprint is not really useful for us. So we can go here and then we can select design only. We don't need the blueprint because it is not really useful. So let's select design. And here we can also increase the size of this area to make it more visible. So I can increase more if I want. So let's reduce a little bit this area and let's increase a little bit more. It is also possible to modify the resolution of this interface to make it more visible using this button. So here we have different default values of the resolution, but all of them are very high. So for this reason, I will go to generic phones and tablets. Then I will select this resolution, which is for 180. 800 pixels so let's select this this makes this interface more visible so let's increase it a little bit and as you can see this time the text is more clear now it is necessary to uh, create a virtual device so the virtual device allows us to test the application on the computer so let's click on this button it is for AVD manager which is Android virtual device manager. So let's click on this Then let's click on create virtual device Now in this window we can select the resolution that we want So I will select Nexus S which has a small resolution which fits well with my computer So I select this then next Now in this window we have uh, different available system images that we can install with our virtual device so the system image is the version of the Android that we can install on our virtual device. So in this list, all of them are not downloaded. That's why we have this download link uh, near to each uh, version. So in my case, I will download uh, this version, which is API 28. So let's click on download. Of course, you can download any version of these available versions. Now in this window, it is necessary to select accept. To accept the license of the selected system image then let's click on next now we have to wait till the end of the download and the installation and this will take some time depending on your internet connection speed now the installation finished successfully so let's click on finish and we have to select this system image that we have uh, downloaded so let's select it and now let's click next so here we can provide a name for this uh, virtual device so i will accept this default name then let's click on finish now we can see that we have already created this virtual device so we can start it using this button so let's start this virtual device now we can close this window and we have to wait for the virtual device to appear. So this will take few seconds or even few minutes depending on the performance of your computer. So let's wait. So this is the virtual device and the system started correctly. Now we can use it to test our application. So before starting the application, I have to modify a little bit the main activity. So I will just go to main activity.java 
and just uh, here after the first line I will just add a simple statement to modify and to set the title of the activity now let's run this application using this button so as you can see this is the virtual device that we started it is selected so let's click on this button to start and to test the application now let's go back to the virtual device now the application is built and installed correctly on the virtual device and as you can see this is the title that I set in the Java class and this is the layout that we created using the layout file so we can also close this application either using this button or using this top button that is available in Android Studio so let's stop this application and if we go back to the emulator we can see that the application is stopped so in the next video I will show you how to create a more complex uh, Android application using uh, Android Studio. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel.